Hello and welcome back to Lawrence Place Factorio Space Exploration. In the last episode we built up the belt round the top to carry ammunition and stuff out to the turrets, so that's um, going quite well. But I think there's some expansion required on that, and I'm going to need lots of burner inserters, so let's have those being made on the bus as well. Grab a few of those. Now we can head up here and extend the, um, the belt up towards the, the upper wall as well, and start linking this in at the right distance away. And this is because obviously I haven't had any attacks up this way yet, but I am going to need um, defences up here at some point. So we'll start putting the turrets in, just to keep everything um, looked after. Because it's only a matter of time until the biters come around this way, I expect. So my usual plan with these sort of things is to put in the turrets at a sort of decent spacing like this, so it's not so there aren't too many of them and it doesn't swallow up too much ammunition, apart from, you know, what's on the belts. Uh, and then, then, then put in, and then if, if they, if the biters do attack this area to an extent that the turrets are struggling to cope, then I can come along and put more turrets in in, in the in the gaps. So there's plenty of room for them. So this is my this is my sort of fairly standard layout at the moment. Whack all the um, inserts in like that, and there we go. So now we've got we've got plenty of coal coming along here, um, but the ammunition is a bit short. We may have to uh, deal with that in a moment. That inserter on the corner there is struggling because the ammunition's going past too quickly and burner inserters are very slow. Uh, I'm not too worried about that because, as I said, it's not a problem at the moment and once the um, ammunition backs up along that belt, it'll be able to grab it without any problems. Down here, we're still having issues with the um, with the copper, with blocking the um, the iron supply, so I'm... I'm... I'm struggling a little bit to fix that, but I think having it coming in from both, having this, the, uh, the splitter and balancer there will um, hopefully fix that, but we'll see. Either way, there's def definitely a bit of a shortage of iron coming through at the moment, so I think I'm going to have to start thinking about what to do about that. So we'll grab some mining drills from the, uh, from the box on the bus and head off up to my uh, new iron patch up here. So this is the one that I um, I went in and fought that um, base of biters in order to liberate, uh, because I knew I was going to need more iron quite soon. So here we are, saturation um, mining the uh, the patch. Just basically fit in. This isn't quite as many, quite the absolute maximum number of drills you can put in, and not just because I ran out. You can. It is possible to put them in um, without the gap between them behind, and then use the um, and then use lots of under, underground belts in order to have the uh, the belts dipping. In order to put the pylons between the um, between the front side of the miners instead of between the back side of them. Later on in the game, that's perhaps worthwhile when you've got bots to, to lay all the stuff out for you. Um, at this stage of the game, it's, it's a lot more effort to put it down. It's a lot more expensive in, in iron to do so. So I decided it's not actually worth doing that at this point. I'll just leave the, uh, the gap as it is. But there we go. I've linked up to the power, I think. So now those um, now those miners will start to hopefully start digging, digging the ore up. I need to decide where to put that in, though, of course, and, and so we're going to feed it down to the um, to the smelting facilities down here and just try and merge it in with all of this. Uh, that was a bit of a, a bit of a fail because of where I put that um, splitter. You'll notice there's a certain amount of iron ore building up on the um, on the belt going in where the uh, where there should be coal. Uh, I haven't noticed this yet in the game. Um, I'll come back and fix that at some point, I expect. But. Yeah, it's easily done. If you forget that um, insert that uh, underground belts can also take on take in on one side, and that used to be the way that you'd um, split product between. If you had a, if you had a belt that was half half stone and half stone brick, for example, you'd have to use half an underground belt in order to pull pull off just one side of it and not the other. Let's make some more belts to get down here as well. So my having one machine making these belts, and again, I think it's, it's slightly iron starved. There's um, not quite as much iron coming in to give it to, for the uh, cog, cog production for the belts as required, so that's causing a few issues. Oh, and this was frustrating. Um, so those meteor attacks that I've been talking about, um, where I've been looking on the map to see where they've gone, well, this one actually landed right in the middle of my green circuit production facility. It quite a lot. It, it didn't destroy an enormous number of things, but it damaged loads of things in this area so I'm now going in just repairing everything bringing it back to back to back up to scratch so the um yeah turns out those that the uh, the meteors are a bit of a danger if you happen to be unlucky enough to have one drop into your base so far this is the only time it's happened but um yeah it's something definitely something to be aware of in the uh, once you get bots I imagine it's not going to be quite so frustrating because the bots will come in and repair everything for you but at this stage, I had to actually come in and do all of this by hand, and that was mildly annoying, should we say. <laughs> oh well. 
Let's unload all the junk I'm carrying into, into the appropriate places. Right, and now we have to... There, so this is the um, the belt of iron ore coming in from the... Um, oh, I've noticed the problem with the inserters, there, with the underground belt there. So this is the belt of iron ore coming in from the top. Um, and trying to decide exactly what the best way of linking it into the rest of the system is. Um, so the way it is at the moment, all of, the, all of the iron ore is being pulled off the same side of the belt, which is a bit of a shame. Um, but if I put in another um, iron mine, maybe that'll solve that problem. I don't know. Well, and the problem here <laughs> is where to sort the copper out as well. So it's, it's, I've got everything built up in too small an area here, so it's got really fiddly and, and awkward. And yeah, I don't have to. I don't like this very much. But it's one of those things where you you've, you've built it and yeah, the spaghetti is there, and it and sometimes you just can't be bothered to deal with it. I, I probably should. Uh, but I haven't yet. <laughs> so here we go. I want another iron uh, smelting facility in down here because I'm getting through iron at too fast a rate for that one one thing to deal with it. Because that's only producing half a belt of iron at abs at the absolute best. So we'll link all of this up somehow. Just deciding how is the uh, tricky part. Uh, I'm going to bring it down the other all the way around the outside, um, just because that way I don't have to worry quite so much about. It everything else getting in the way and ending up pop up polluting my um, my iron my, uh, iron refineries. It's got dark so it's time to put in some lights. These are actually reasonably effective. They, they produce a... they light up a reasonable area so with with enough of these scattered through it um, yeah it, it makes it makes a reasonable difference. Uh, they're all going out now because it's dawn. Uh, so this isn't something I had to bother with with the angel bobs run through because I had always day turned on because I got fed up of of um, just getting stuck in the dark when I was trying to build things, it was annoying. <laughs> so, so I cheated a bit with that. Um, that also did lead on to it being a massive cheat with the solar power later, in that I got solar power all the time rather than just during the day, and so I didn't need to worry about building up accumulators as well. Um, that was a bit cheap of me, I admit, but by that point it was. I'm not going to say it was too late to change, uh, because clearly it wasn't. But it was too late for me to be bothered about changing and just, yeah I had that couldn't be bothered <laughs> which is completely the wrong attitude I will happily accept that but uh, I'm gonna do it properly in this game I'm not going to I'm not going to use always day which means I'm gonna need lots of lights and things as well to, to uh, keep, keep things going now this is me running into the problem of the uh, belts not being built quickly enough so it's a bit of a I, d I don't know whether I should try and build them faster and have another machine building them as well or and most of the time it's not really an issue because you build up a load of belts while you're faffing around with something else. You go and grab them and that's enough for a, for a good while. I think the problem is really that it was only building up to 200 in the box. So I uh, eventually changed it. I can't remember if I've done it by now or not. But I eventually changed it so that you could fit a thousand. If it put a thousand into the box before it decided it was full. Okay, here we go. Let's load up the other... Um... Oh, no belts. Let's let load up the other side of the... Um... Uh, load up the other half of this of this belt and get a decent decent amount flowing through. Now, what I've done here is I've got both of them exporting two uh, two half two ha a half half of half a belt on each side. Oh dear, a quarter of a belt on each side, and then merging them. So we should get a steady flow of um, of iron through now, and hopefully it'll be enough to keep everything working. Put some more lights in as well, so we can just. I feel that having having lights around most of the pylons is probably, or every other pylon in most areas, is it gives a good sort of balance. Uh, there is a mod that will put automatically put lights onto pylons. Um, I haven't got that. Again, it feels only very slightly cheaty. Maybe it puts the price of the pylons up a bit to compensate. I'm not sure. Right, and with the base expanding like this, I need to start putting in more radars because they're just uh, they're needed pretty much every. You need to have them every so often just so you can see what's going on around your base. Uh, so, and if I'm building a lots lots of radars, then obviously I want to automate it rather than build them in my pockets all the time because that's just slow and a faff. Uh, so we'll build up a little radar production facility here. That's so as you may you may have noticed earlier, I copied and pasted the um, production facility for the electric motors because that's something I've needed. I've already designed it. There's no point in going through and trying to remember exactly what goes where again. So I just copied and pasted it. But because I don't have the bots yet, I still had to place all the components manually. Uh, that wasn't too much of a problem, but it's um, it's something else that needs to be done. Okay, I'm paranoid about um, the. Asteroid, so I'd look for that one. Um, 
And here we go. So the, the other, but however, the radar requires slightly different components later on in that it takes the um, it takes stone bricks apparently and iron and, and green circuit. So we need to feed those across up another belt. This is reasonably straightforward though. There we go. It's building radars. Excellent. And we can finish the bus off as well, just to make sure all the, all the belts go along as far as they should. Okay, next job. I'm starting to run out of power. So, one thing I've discovered is that the, um, the, 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 the boilers and steam engines, I believe, are slightly more efficient with, um, with the amount of coal they use, the or the amount of electricity produced for the amount of coal. So I'm going to try switching over to those and see how, um, even though it requires a little bit more, um, sort of, Bureaucracy, for want of a better word, and uh, things like pipes and water supplies are required. So, and um, so I built up a load of these underground pipes, which are really expensive. You have to make something like 40 pipes, and then um... oh, and in um, in this mod pack, it turns out the um, offshore pumps actually require power as well, which they can't in vanilla because they're the first step to getting power. But here, because we've got the um, the burner generators, it can rec it can slightly more realistically it can require power for the um, for, for the offshore pumps, which is kind of nice I guess um, it's something else to worry about and something else to go wrong and that's what Factorio is all about eh? so yeah so I had uh, so I ran a, a, a pylon down there now we're also gonna need a bit more power up here uh, sorry a bit more power a bit more ammunition because it's 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 not this being used up faster than it's being generated but it's there's so much belt going around now that we actually want I want to produce it a bit faster just to fill everything up now what's wrong Oh yeah, putting a radar up the top uh, just to cover. Well, move it across a little bit so we're actually covering the um, the full area that I've explored or claimed. There we go. Now, oh yes, there's a bit more asteroid damage that I hadn't noticed. Okay, so the next thing to think about is going to be the logistic science packs because I've done all basically all of the just red research, so I now need something else, and that requires inserters and. Um, and belts. So I'm at the moment I'm, I'm going through all the numbers, trying to work out how many of the sort of sub components I'm going to need, how many how many cogs, how many motors, and therefore from that how many machines I'm going to need to produce those. Because the idea, my objective at this point, is to produce one per assembly machine second, if that makes sense. So if it takes five seconds to build a um, a science pack then I want to have five machines making them so one is produced a second now sure there's a multiplier on that where the machines may go faster or slower but basically if you balance it up around that then you should always get the right number out and so I worked out that let's see cogs take half a second to produce motors take half a second as well I think so hopefully with it set up like this I will end up with the right number of motors the right number of electric motors and some cogs left over for um do I need cogs? No, I don't think I do need... Uh, yes, I do need cogs left over for, um, for the belts. So, but doing it like this, I should hopefully end up with a good balance of all of the, all of the components and have the machines running basically flat out. Um, although if they're, if, they're, if they're slightly output um, restricted, it doesn't matter. As long as the um, science pack producing machines can, can uh, actually make them fast enough. That's the important thing. Okay, it's ten, not five. Um, so here we go. There's a um, belt here that's going to be carrying the the two subcomponents for these uh, these uh, what do you call it uh, assembly machines for the science for the science packs. There we go. So it's going to carry the inserters and the belts. Plug it all in. See what happens. And this is about the point. No, it's not about the point. I realised <laughs> in a moment I will realise that I forgot the copper cables for the. Um, for the electric motors and I'll get a bit frustrated and try and botch it in somehow but first I'm putting in the other uh, set of belts to carry put the um basically what we're doing here is we're putting the, the science packs on the bus and that means we can have red ones being brought all the way over here put the green ones onto the belt as well onto a belt as well with them and then we can and then we've got them both carried together and we can put them into the um, into the research labs together lamps because it got dark I'm thinking I was thinking about thinking about how much how much that um, those cliffs are going to get in the way and I think at this point it's probably going to be all right because by the time um, I want to build up the uh, science the the research labs far enough far enough to be a problem I'm going to have got past uh, I'm going to have got enough research done that I'll have cliff explosives um, this is probably famous last words and I'll regret it very soon but 
Well, we'll see, I guess. <laughs> extend the bus, extend the bus. Yeah, this is the point where I went, oh no, I've forgotten the, the cables, but fortunately I can just squeeze them in here. It's a little bit dirty and spaghetti, but then, you know, that's how Factorio goes when you don't think about things properly at the, at the right time. I'm also, because I'm using the burner um, science machines at the moment, I'm going to need a, a supply of coal up here as well. Now, as usual with me not planning things ahead properly, um, I hadn't realised at this point, or hadn't noticed, at this, remembered at this point, that I actually got to the stage where I can start building the electric um, science labs. So we'll um, we'll do that in a moment. But for for now, it's um, we've got we can be, we can feed them all with uh, with coal and uh, and red and red and green science. That should eventually once this starts working. What have I missed out here? Oh, just some more inserters. Okay. Right, so that should now. There's a bit of a limiting factor here. The, the pr problem is, the, is um, I think to an extent, how fast the inserters can uh, can add the copper and the wires to those to, for the electric motors. So, I think that might be going to be a limiting factor. But we'll we'll see how the research goes and whether whether it's a problem. I may need to end up end up um, having another machine building electric motors. Will or elect or cable elect, uh, copper cables. But for now, we've got all four of the science machine science labs running, and I've just realised that I can make uh, I can make electric ones. So <laughs> we'll head over here and um, free up a bit more space and set up some machines for doing that. And again, I could do it uh, manually, but at some point in the future, I'm going to want to have um, I'm going to want to have a system of labs that are going to be uh, a system of it's a bit close. Um, I'm going to well, we'll be able to want to automate putting them down, so I'm going to need to have them being built by um, bots. So it's, it's, it's just a matter of time. I think I have just about left enough room there for the uh, for the for the, for the belts. No, I actually haven't. That's going to be a problem later. I've, um, so I've just realised there isn't now room for have to have two belts full of science packs on the other side of these labs. Uh, I think I'm probably going to end up having to move the whole thing one square to the left once I uh, develop cliff explosives. So that's a bit a bit short-sighted of me, <laughs> a bit frustrating. But at least I'll be able to carry um, six science packs in before it's a problem, and by then maybe I'll have moved off somewhere else. I guess we'll see we'll see when it happens. It's amazing how many things you notice when you're um, when you're watching it back that you didn't realise at the time where you've uh, where you've screwed up. Because <laughs> I had absolutely no idea I'd messed that one up. Yeah, you know, more glass needed. I suppose since they look basically look like greenhouses, that makes sense. Right, that should maybe be everything. Uh, we'll. Oh no, no, I, I remember. I missed out a couple of. Uh, yeah, none of those components are actually um, reachable by the uh, by the assembly machines. Oh, I take it back. I did notice that I'd not left enough space. So now I'm just I'm moving all of the um, I'm moving the lab science a little bit further over to the right just to get get that bit of extra space it's going to need. And also it moves it a little bit further away from the cliffs, which is always nice. Uh, let's just scatter some lights very randomly through the uh, mining areas. All right, I think that's enough for one episode. Thank you for watching. I hope you'll come back and join me next time. There's plenty more to do. Let's get that science up and running properly, and then we'll have so many more things to research. We can just, well, <laughs> go absolutely nuts. Maybe, maybe we'll even manage another science pack. Let's see. Maybe oil. <laughs> anyway, we'll see what happens next time. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you then.